All right, so let's look at this idea of a spontaneous process again. Um, in the previous video, we talked about whether or not something was spontaneous in terms of the equilibrium constant k. A spontaneous process is a process in which the equilibrium constant is greater than 1. But we want to look at it in terms of the thermodynamics, the energy related to the system, and, and, and to see if there's a way we can predict whether or not something will be spontaneous um, besides looking at the equilibrium constant. One of the things that we said in the previous video is that there is an enthalpy factor. The enthalpy change for a uh, process is the delta H. If the delta H is negative, that's exothermic. If the delta H is positive, that's endothermic. And what we have noticed over the years, that's what scientists have noticed and looked at, is that if the enthalpy change for a process is negative, if it is an exothermic process, then this tends to be a spontaneous process. Now there are exceptions to this. There are some endothermic processes that are also spontaneous. There are some exothermic processes that are not spontaneous all the time. Um, one of the prime examples of an endothermic process that is spontaneous is our ice cube that we talked about in the previous video. If I have solid ice, it will spontaneously become liquid um, as long as the temperature isn't cold enough, as long as it's not in an, uh, a freezer or something like that. And this is an endothermic process, so this is an exception. This is endothermic, meaning it needs to absorb heat in order to become liquid. But again, there's, there's sort of a, a an exception to it, it's spontaneous under certain circumstances, as long as the temperature isn't too low. However, by and large, we do notice that most exothermic reactions do tend to be spontaneous. An exothermic process that is spontaneous would be the combustion of hydrogen. If I fill a balloon with hydrogen gas and I ignite a spark to it, if I put a, a flame to it, it will spontaneously react with the oxygen in the room and it will combust, reaction with oxygen is typically called a combustion, to form water. This releases lots and lots of heat. This is usually noted by a flame, a ball of flame around the balloon. It's really fun to watch and if you help me remember, we'll do it in the classroom. Um, this heat is released, which means the water is usually in the gaseous state and then it just sort of goes into the room, is dispersed. In order to balance this, we need a 2 here and a 2 here. This reaction is exothermic. It releases heat, and it is spontaneous. Once I put that flame to the hydrogen, it does spontaneously proceed. It has a very large equilibrium constant. It's essentially all products at equilibrium. And again, we notice that spontaneous processes tend to be exothermic. Exothermic processes tend to be spontaneous. Yet, we've got some endothermic that are also spontaneous and some exothermics that aren't necessarily always spontaneous. So there's something more. However, this tendency is important to note and is a good thing to keep in mind. If the enthalpy change is negative, if it's an exothermic process, this does tend to make the process spontaneous. In the case of our ice cube, we have something else going on here, which also tends to make reactions spontaneous. And that is the fact that in the solid to liquid transition, the particles become more random or disorganized. This is known as the entropy. The entropy of a system is a measure of the order of the system, or disorder, more appropriately. An entropy, an entropy change, you guys say entropy. An entropy change, which is given the symbol delta S, the symbol for entropy is S, is the, um, the change in the randomness or disorder. And if a system gets more random or more disordered, we say that the entropy change is positive. It's either positive or negative. A delta S greater than zero means that it is more random or more entropy. It's, you're going to a bigger entropy. Uh, more random, more disordered, more unorganized, and that this tends to be 
this tends to be uh, something that we see for spontaneous changes. If the delta S is positive, this tends to be spontaneous. But again, this is not the only thing because we do see some processes that have an increase in entropy, a delta S greater than zero, that are not always spontaneous. We also see some spontaneous processes that have a decrease in entropy, a delta S of less than zero. But these two, again, are good to note. These are what we call the driving forces for reactions to be spontaneous. And together, they are tied into whether or not a process is going to be spontaneous. So scientists sort of took all of this evidence, all this experimental evidence, and they came up with a law based on observations. We call this the second law of thermodynamics. We saw the first law in the previous video. And the second law of thermodynamics says that the entropy of the universe is constantly increasing. Basically what they observed is for a process to be spontaneous, for any process to be spontaneous, the entropy of the universe has to get bigger. The delta S of the universe, not the system, the entire universe has to increase. It has to be a greater than zero value. Now the entropy of the universe is obviously tied to the system's enthalpy change and entropy change. So there's a tie in there, but it has to include both terms in order to calculate or determine what the entropy change of the universe is. And we actually can calculate the entropy change of the universe. You can calculate something for the entire universe looking at your system, which is, of course, a good party trick.